Good evening and welcome to tonight's show from DJN TV, Disc Jockey News TV. Tonight's show is brought to you by Electra Voice, DJ Event Planner, DJ Trivia, Odyssey Innovative Designs and Cases, NLFX Professional. Promo only, and the DJ and TV insiders. DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy to manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. I knew he was going to do that. I keep forgetting that. It's like, I have no more videos to put up. Oh, uh, we're live. Oh, my goodness, John. All right. So, anybody, uh, everybody, hi. Welcome to Monday night. If, if you've been, if you've not been tuned in, man, I cannot talk since he threw this at us. Um, if you've not been tuned in for the past couple of hours, you've missed some great content. Um, the convention series and, and what's been going on tonight is just absolutely awesome. And, and I feel humbled the fact that we got to kind of I, is everybody like, are we the headliners? You know, everybody else was our opening acts. Is yes, that how it goes? That's exactly the way it is. Awesome. So, uh, so we're your headliner tonight, whether you knew it or not. And, uh, but there's some great shows coming up the ra later this week as well. So make sure you're checking out all the details on those. And John will give us more details on them later on. But it has felt like forever since I've been with the two of you, um, whether it's been because you've been in Vegas or whether it's because you've been sick. But uh, I, I, I do applaud MJ. He stepped up and, and we, we ran with it for a couple of weeks here. So, uh, but we are so thankful to have you guys back. And, and tonight, in honor of uh, the Prime Four, and you're going to be hearing more about that tonight, um, we've got four on it. We, just for tonight, though. It's that was not Dan's slacking, idea. I promise you. It's because. Dan, you know, that was Dan. That was Dan's idea. Dan's idea. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, why don't we just kick things off, Shani? What have we okay. got? Lead us off. We All start right. with one, right? Yeah, okay. It's been a while. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where do we start? Oh, the math guy's having a problem. Yeah, as the teacher says. Oh, yeah. We're counting down. Four, three. three okay. No, we're not counting down. We, we, we're counting up. So, I know um, whenever I did a last show, which I don't know when I did I did a show, but whenever I did the last show, we were, I've always had a topic about Vegas. Well, I got more stuff to tell you guys about Vegas. So if you're ever thinking about just going to some concerts, you can do like, you know, three days, three nights in Vegas and probably hit like all your favorite artists. So, um, but one artist you are not going to be able to hit who um, is actually, they're closing their show after 11 years. Donnie and Marie. Hmm. Wait a minute. Wow. Didn't we? I thought we talked about them. No. Okay. We did. We, we For some did. reason, I thought we had talked about them and they were like switching places. No, not switching places. We just talked about them being there. And oh, okay. That they're, they're at least 25, 30 years old and they're still there. <laughs> yeah. So they decided after 11 years on the strip that um, their final show is going to be November 16th. And for those that don't know, they've been at the Flamingo for, for these 11 years. And before that, they've been at other places. But um, yeah, they started they started there September of 2008 at the Flamingo. And they have been there for 11 years. And they, oh, they wanted to do like a six-week show. And they just kept extending it. So from six weeks, 
It went to 11 years. Wow. It's like the three hour tour from Gilligan's Island. Seriously. Yeah. So they definitely said this isn't the end of, of them like performing and being together. It's just the end of the residency in, in Vegas. Hmm. So in July, you're going to be giving us the details on their um, 14 city Christmas album Mer tour. North American tour. Yes. And then they're, and then telling you that in October, their Christmas album will be October will be 25th. Gone. It's going to drop. I'm telling you. Yeah. I mean, who knows? They might do like a Christmas show type thing. I mean, maybe we're just giving them ideas. Danny Marie's people, if you're watching, write these notes down. We're giving you ideas how to end your 11, you know, your 11 years there. And then give us a couple of royalties. Some sort. Or at least tickets. So we could, like, yeah. We could, so we yeah. Oh, there and we could wear our Andy Griff Griffith t-shirts and be awesome. I did go into their um I, I I'm not I'm not gonna lie, I went in the flamingo one time because I had to go to the bathroom. And they're I don't know if you've ever been in there, but their gift shop for the show is just huge. Like you name it, they have their picture on everything. Wow. Whatever you thought you you wanted to buy for somebody, whether it be real or a gag gift. Yes. Um, their faces are on it. <laughs> so, and, and it, it's always busy. The gift shop is always busy there. So, um, yeah, people just go there just to get gifts, not even go to the show, but they're like, I love Donnie Marie. I want to get a poster. Wow. Do people still buy posters. They had them there, but I don't know. If... Somebody does. They sell them <laughs> at Walmart. Do they still sell posters like of, yeah. of like artists and stuff? I'm not talking like, you know, like art. I'm talking about literally like back in the day when everybody used to have like the posters on their wall of like their teen so, idols and stuff. But yeah, I can't, so. you can't consider like Donnie Marie a teen idol. <laughs> <laughs> like their pictures now. <laughs> like the 19th. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, so they're going to be leaving Vegas, but don't fret because I've told you about numerous artists that having their residency in Vegas and adding to the residencies in Vegas are um, two really incredible artists. One is Janet Jackson. Okay. Yeah. She is going to do um, a show at the Park Theater, which I've talked about, that new Park Theater that is connected to the Club Chaos and everything. And she is going to do a run starting May 17th of this year. And it's going to go May 17th to August 10th. And it's mm -hmm. going to be 15 shows. And she also said that the show is also going to feature a special 30th anniversary of the celebration of Rhythm Nation. 30 years, wow. Rhythm Nation. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I know that dance. I had to practice it. Yeah. So um, she said that the show is going to be about, um, it's going to peel the layers of her private life, sharing her transformation from young girl to global icon. With Hopefully the 30th no anniversary of Rhythm Nation. <sighs> So if you're a huge Janet Jackson fan, um, you know, cause I know like she, she had the tour going and then she got pregnant. So she had to like stop that tour cause the doctor had to put her on bed rest and everything. And then she finished the tour, but a lot of people like couldn't, you know, she shortened the dates and stuff. So if you want to see her Vegas may, what I say, May 17th through August 10th. And it's going to be at that new park theater that they're putting together that like every artist is going to be, is going to be at when they, when they come to Vegas. Now, are they, oh, wait, theater. Okay, theater. Yeah, so yeah, they re theater. they're releasing yeah. dates and. Right, exactly. Yeah. And and if you've noticed when I've talked about that theater, most of the residencies are just like a couple weeks or like a month. It's not, they're not years of residency at that park theater. Hmm. Well, um, and this is Jan Jackson, so come on. Right, yeah. And then the um, other artist, which is a group, is Aerosmith. Hmm. Okay. So if you ever wanted to see Aerosmith and they've been on tour and stuff, but if you ever like thought about it and you want to hit some more concerts and stuff that you could do a whole Vegas thing. So their show is called deuces are wild and it starts April 16th or I'm sorry, April 6th. Yeah. April 6th. And they're, and they've already sold out 18 shows. So if you're looking for like a, a 
show like April, they've already sold those out. So they added 17 more shows this week. Wow. Yeah. I, Aerosmith. Yeah. So they're also going to be at Park Theater. Imagine that. Hmm. Yeah. And Park Theater is actually where Lady Gaga is right now and where she's doing her residency. So um, they're also going to be at, at Park Theater. And they said the show will feature never before seen visuals and audios from recording sessions they have done over the years. Um, and then you guys ready for this? Ready for this? this is the, some of you guys are going to get excited about this one. And you can put it. <laughs> um, when they're done with that, they're going to head east for the whole month of August for shows in Maryland and Atlantic city, Atlantic city at the MGM resorts, which means Borgata mm. and the Atlantic city dates are August 16th through 18th. So close. You almost had me. I know. I know. <laughs> I was like, you're going to tell me this is going to, well, we're in expo. That would like be, you're yeah. going to, you're like, I was like, we would have to go buy tickets, but think about it because, what? but we talked about, if you remember, which I'm actually going to talk about later in the show too, is that's, that's the same dates of Woodstock. Oh, so you could do a whole Aerosmith. Well, you could do the Woodstock thing first in New York, then, then go to Atlantic city do Borgata, hang out at White House Subs, and then get ready for DJ Expo. <laughs> yeah, but Aerosmith is after, after Expo. Then it's the reverse. I don't know. Then it's the reverse. So okay. Expo first, hit Aerosmith, and then go to Woodstock and get a sub to go. Couple, because you, you have to eat on the road yeah. and eat while you're yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, so so after Vegas, Vegas April six, but those shows already are sold out. So check the other seventeen shows they just added, and then after that, if you don't want to head to Vegas and you're in the east east, the whole entire month of August, they're starting in Maryland. They're going to Atlantic City, then they're going um, Massachusetts, I think, and they're just they're hitting MGM. Um, I guess their contract is with MGM, so they're hitting the MGM resorts. Hmm. Yeah. And before we talk about um, Woodstock, I want to hit on that new uh, Vegas club that I keep telling you about, Chaos, mm -hmm. that's going to have their opening um, April 5th and through 7th. And they just keep adding more and more people to this like opening weekend. This opening weekend is going to be crazy. So you guys don't remember, Chaos is the day club and night club that um, is going to be in the Palms Casino. And um, I've mentioned so many other artists that they have for the opening, but they just um, added that April 5th, they're doing, they have like an intimate theater that they also built that's called the Pearl Concert Theater. And Alicia Keys is going to perform there on the opening on April 5th. And then later that night at Chaos, the club, Travis Scott will be performing and then Skrillex is one of their um, resident DJs. So if you're into like those artists and stuff, you can hit April 5th and do the Alicia Keys thing and then take a nap, a power nap, and then hit Travis Scott and, and Skrillex. And then Saturday, you, um, you don't even go to bed. You just go to the day club of chaos. And they have not mentioned, um, they're still haven't released who the DJ is going to be the day club, but, um, that will open. Then you go and you fill up on food and naps and then you hit chaos again because that's when Cardi B starts her residency there. And then also G easy is going to be there that night. And J Balvin will be there. And that's all just in one night. And that club they said is going to hold 8,000 people. Goodness. <laughs> so if you thought you like, if you went into like Omnia like when that was built and you thought like that was a big club or like marquee, <laughs> this one holds 8,000. Yeah. Wow. And then there's another day of the weekend and that's Sunday. So for Sunday fun day, again, you don't go to sleep. You go right um, to the day club 
and DJ Vice and resident DJ Cascade, which they stole from from the other club. Now he's resident there, will be um, headlining at the day club and then go get some food, hit the little small the intimate theater. And um, Hoser is going to uh, be performing that night. And then at the club, they haven't announced Sunday night who is performing at the club. That's just opening weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's pretty much that's how pretty the pretty massive. Yeah, that's pretty much how the VFW up here when they opened up. That's how they kind of yeah. picked up their their things. They yeah, so they the so, party view was like Karen M, right? <laughs> it was right. Karen M and her happy accordion. Yeah, but boy, did oh, yeah, she it's... rock that accordion. So, yeah, so the DJs at, like, residency DJs uh, was Skrillex, um, DJ Vice for those, you know, those Cascade, and then um, Marshmallow just signed a two-year contract for $60 million. Yeah. I, I don't know what... what... I would assume that Marshmallow is going to be on food stamps to kind of make up the difference for the lack of money. He's just going to start eating his helmet. <laughs> Take little bites yeah. out of it. Yeah. Can't afford. Yeah. So that, that is, um, that's chaos club in the palms <laughs> in their little theater and their day club. And I mean, wow, that hotel is just going to be jumping like crazy. And that opening weekend is just going to be bananas. And I'm sure they're adding last minute people too and everything. Crazy. crazy. Yeah. So we're up to Woodstock. Okay. All right. So again, so we're um, like up to eight, I think if I, if I kept track <laughs> and, and like seven were all Vegas. So yeah, I exactly. So as I talked about like a month ago or two months ago about the 50th anniversary of Woodstock and how we can, um, we're going to do a whole DJ and TV um, RV and we're going to go to Woodstock after Atlantic city. Well, we have to hit Aerosmith first, I guess. And maybe we'll just hit club chaos. Cause I'm sure something's going to be going on. So we'll go to Vegas. It will just, we'll, you know, we'll just hit all, all. by RV. Yeah. Well, by RV because we have but to so that's what RVs for right to cross country from yeah. Atlantic city to Vegas back to Atlantic city. We've got to have that little that little fold out stage so we can go and we can introduce our jazz album to the to the masses. For, Let them know what's what's going to happen for Christmas. We're going on tour now. Yes, we can tease our jazz album. When this album yes. drops, I need about five of you to buy it so we can be in the top. Of the <laughs> That's jazz. right. So we can at least hit the top ten. <laughs> yeah, so five of you. Not. I don't need a thousand. It just. Just five of you. You know what's going to happen? Jeff Goldblum's going to release a new one. It'll take seven. Dang it. And all of our work. He's going to go like platinum. He's going to go rubber. Yeah. And, and we're going to sell like two less and we're not going to make it. No, because everybody from DJ and TV is going to buy. And it's going to be two less than what? <laughs> I know. If it was like two less, I'd, yeah, that would be really salty about that. <laughs> <laughs> so Woodstock, um, I talked about how, you know, they're having it. It's going to be the same location and they, they didn't like, re you know, release any of the artists, but they also said that it was going to be people also from the anniversary. And then, and then if anybody was still around, it'd be from like the original and things like that. So they started releasing the artist lineup and, um, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty big lineup. Um, Jay-Z will be there. Uh, Chance the Rapper will be there. The Killers will be there. Uh, the Black Keys will be there. Robert Plant will be there. Uh, John Forgety will be there. Imagine Dragons. Um, Brandy Carlisle. I love how they say members of the dead. Because <laughs> I guess they can't just say the Grateful Dead is going to be there. So they said members of the dead. Uh, David Crosby will be there, Santana, um, and then uh, they said, and then more, they're still releasing more people and more artists that are going to be at Woodstock. So this is a heavy, heavy lineup. 
And maybe like DJ Shaq Fu will be there because he's headlining at Lollapalooza this year in Chicago and Chicago's not too happy with that. Because they said, we have some incredible DJs and you guys are putting Shaq on the headliner. But who knows? But yeah, so that's Woodstock, everybody. So if you were interested in it um, and you didn't get your tickets because you were waiting for the release of the artist, they just released them. So check it out if you guys are thinking about it and, and let us know so we can jump in your RV. I really wonder, <laughs> I really also wonder what the schedule is going to look like for some of that. Just because like Jay-Z and then Robert Plant. Yeah. <laughs> and then Chance the Racker rapper, then like David Crosby. I'm sure they're gonna have different stages. I would have right. Them. You know, but so are they like, gonna do are play. they all gonna do like one style's all in this one and one style's over on that one? I mean, I know like when they do Lollapalooza here in Chicago, they, you know, they have like the different, the, the different stages and stuff and they kind of do that, but then they like to mix it up a little bit too. So they want, cause they want, oh, I'm sorry. Cause they want people to walk around. So they'll probably do that a little bit, but they'll probably keep the styles kind of. So maybe like the older people who want to see members of the dead and like those people don't have to like really walk. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Be interesting though, yeah. It will be interesting when they when they finally do like the lineup with the stages and see who's performing where. Okay. Yeah. I, I will. I'm still waiting to see. It'd be interesting when the final list comes out. Like, yeah. This is everybody. Yeah, I mean they. I mean, I gave you guys like 15, and then they said and more. Yeah. So they're still probably in talks, probably negotiating money and stuff like that. So they're still in talks with some some people. So it definitely will be interesting to see who who else they get, whether it's the, the old timers or, or the up and coming ones. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, now um, we take a break. <laughs> nope. Now we're going to be done. Thank you very much for tuning in. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it's been fun. No, I, I know what everybody's been wondering about. I mean, I'm, I'm actually to be honest with you. I'm kind of surprised. I'm surprised the chat room has not been like, all right, get to this already. Like, this is what we want to hear about. Exactly. So we'll we'll just stop the the anxiety from from getting any higher, and and yes, and admit that Megaseg 6.03 was released this past week. So the latest version of Megaseg is out there. Wasn't that um, John? Point, I I hate to disappoint you. Zero three. I don't know what the number was, but there was the latest Megaseg did come out this past week. But I have no idea what its numbers anymore. But John, I, I will tell you, our listeners already know that because they tuned in last week for the latest version. We actually dropped that info last week. Oh, I'm so sad. The one time John isn't on the show, and MJ and I actually talked about <laughs> I actually talked about it. The oh, M word. Man, oh, I feel so bad. I, I could tell you for sure that I was like completely out when the show was going on. You think dad, it's okay? You think Dad's dead? Yeah, probably, probably. I did take a drink, even though I was I was watching it, but I I took a drink of my beverage last week <laughs> when it was dropped. Of course, you got it. It's yeah. Required. Okay. The big news: Shaney was able to work with the Dan and DJ Prime 4. What were your first thoughts after spending a couple of days with this machine? It's a beast. Like it definitely is a workhorse. It's a beast. It has all the bells and whistles um, that you would think about wanting on like an all-in-one type of unit. So I was definitely more impressed than not impressed about, you know, like usually like you jump on things, you're like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. But the more I was learning about it, the more I was like, wow, it can do this. It can do this. You can do this. You can do that. So it definitely is exactly what they call it, a standalone all-in-one unit. It is not a controller. It is an all-in-one unit. And that's exactly what it is. It's got everything on it. So what I'm going to, I'm going to take a couple of things you mentioned from our conversation, you know, before yeah. we came live on this. Um, two things that I thought were were really um, kind of cool to hear, because for those of you that didn't know, I mean, obviously Shaney is very well versed in in different styles and different controllers and and vinyl and all that all that good stuff. Um, but 
it's not like they sent her this unit and let her practice for, for hours on end. She showed up, you know, the day before, you know, or whatever. And she got some time on it, but you said it was how long before you, you spent about two hours before you got comfortable, but, but how quickly were you able to actually just kind of start going and actually start playing and mixing? To just play and mix and not do like the bells and whistles with it, um, with the touch screen and everything, getting used to it, I would say about 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. And I was like, let's go, let's do a set. <laughs> like, let's, let's record it because you can record it too. Like I was like, let's go. So it definitely was very easy. And that was one thing when I was showing people when they were coming over to me and I was having them do hands-on on my unit that was a, a thing I was getting from everybody was, Oh God, this is so easy. Like it's easy to, to try to figure things out on this with the touch screen and everything. And that's what I was scared of. I was scared of, Oh my God, I have to do this, but it also has the knobs like the controller too to turn, to scroll down and load and things like that. So if you, if you're familiar with certain controllers, it has those two. So you don't have to use the touch screen to scroll and load. Nice. You can use the knob and the buttons on, on the unit itself. Okay. Sorry, so, John. So major, major differences for those who are wondering what it's like to go from a laptop and, and then going to a standalone, what, uh, what did you miss? I guess let's start with what the, from the laptop. Yeah. So when I decided to do it and for those that don't know, um, my first day spinning, I did a six and a half hour set. So just so you kind of know what I was going with, I, it was a six and a half hour set the first day, and then it was a five hour, five hour set the second day. So that's, and with those type of sets, I try to, especially if I'm at like a conference or something, my whole thing is I want to just for me, this, and this is just for like me, I try not to repeat songs just, just to see if I can do it. So I had to have in my head and mind you, I didn't know about, and we're going to talk about this later. I didn't know about the whole hard drive situation yet. I only knew about the thumb drive situation. So I, ne I needed to make sure I had enough music on my thumb drive. Now, of course I like every couple hours I could have repeated songs or sets or whatever I wanted to do, but the type of person I am when I do festivals and things like that, I like to try to just not, repeat it if I don't, you know, if I don't have to. So I want, so I wanted to make sure I made folders and playlists and put songs in there so I can do like six hours sure. without repeating a song. So my thumb drive definitely, I mean, I, you know, have like the bigger thumb drive. So I was definitely able to put over six hours of music onto a thumb drive. And then of course there is when I got there and found out about you know, being able to do the one terabyte hard drive. And yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. I, okay, great. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks well, for giving me information ahead of time. <laughs> and, it's, and there's two ways to do the hard drive. There's the internal drive, which obviously wouldn't have worked in this situation, but Janie could have brought her external USB, plugged it in, and it will allow her to access that, which would have been really cool. Yeah, and with the hard drive, um, if you guys want to do that, you can actually take um, take out the screws on the bottom, put it into the unit, put it back, you know, put it back in. So the hard drive isn't hanging out anywhere or anything like that. It's actually in your unit and you could have that in your unit, but then also put in USB thumb drives as well. So you can have all that going on. Craziness of like music from everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm just I, because I remember hearing the insane amount of hookups that you can have. There are so many like, I mean, and everything has a purpose, but there was like so many XR, XLRs and, and USBs and like all these things like in the back. I mean, and they uh, I mean, I learned that like every single one of them had had a purpose, but I was just like, this is just crazy. This is just crazy what this what this machine can do, you know, it, for for your for your events and how you can do all these all these different things and you and you're doing it right from here with the screen like you don't have a laptop connected you have everything like right in front of you in an all in one unit hmm. so and, and and one of the things i thought i'll 
just to just to be clear, because I was confused on this earlier, and, and yeah. so um, I saw a post that you had made online, and and in regards, to, and it came up about the idea of, of the laptop. I, you know, at, at one point there was some talk, and it sounded like you know this had the option to hooking up a laptop, and obviously it kind of defeats the purpose of being an all in one with all with all those pieces and the screen and everything right there. Um, but as of right now, that's not the case. So this thing is this thing is set up to be a controller and a computer for really the price of a good computer, a really good computer. Well, so you're not, getting a lot of, lot of bang for the buck, I think, definitely with there's, that. There's, there is one little caveat to that. It actually can hook up to a computer, but it's going to read the computer as a hard drive. It's not going to read it as a a software or it's not going to... Right. You can't, you mm -hmm. can't use the computer to DJ off of. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people were talking about, like, oh, you could hook up your computer to DJ off, and that defeats the whole purpose of having having that screen. But if you're gonna be there having it to run lighting software. You can do that. You can do sound switch yep. on it. Okay. Yeah. Sound switch works with it. Yeah. I missed that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can do sound switch. With, remember, they uh, in music own sound switch. So that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So sound switch. Yeah, we'll work with it. But again, like I mean, I'm gonna be honest. If when I do buy my new computer within a year, my computer that I buy with the hard drive and everything is gonna be over three grand, and that's just a computer. That's not buying DJ equipment. This base price, like you know. It, without going to somebody that might have a pre-order special is only $1,600. So, I mean, for somebody like me, I'd be like, oh, well, I don't need to buy a computer because that's, and, and my computers that I buy, like those are my dedicated, like I put all those bells and whistles on it because those are my dedicated DJ computers. And I'm like, okay, $3,200 before taxes and stuff or a 600, you know, $1,600 unit. That I don't need like the laptop for it. Yeah. So back to um, Dan, like your whole software thing. I think you were kind of getting into. So mm -hmm. for those that don't know about the the Denon units, they have their own music management. That's called Engine Prime. It's a free download, and 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 that's what you use with you know some some of the you know some of the the stuff. And as of right now before the, the unit even comes out, um, you can put your iTunes, your Serato DJ Pro, your Tractor Pro, and your Rekordbox um, into the music management. So I am a Serato user. So all I did was I downloaded the Engine Prime on my laptop. I clicked the box that said, upload Serato. Um, my internal Serato is one terabyte with the computer specs that I have for my computer that's only two years old right now, I literally walked away for 20 minutes. I came back, my playlists, my folders, my hot cues, my loops, everything is now in Engine Prime. So I don't need a second thing like with Record Box or Record Buddy, like when you need to switch over and you have to do like that, everything went in there. So I know a lot of people, a lot of people are like, well, I don't, you know, I don't want to use a new software. I don't want to do this. Well, it put mine right in it with mm -hmm. all of that. So all my cue points, everything, my playlists, my folders, everything went into now Engine Prime. And it's a very easy software. You don't like, I didn't look up like YouTube videos or anything like, how do you, how do I DJ with this? Like <laughs> there's, there's no, I mean, granted I've done that for a lot of stuff, but you know, <laughs> how do I use this light bulb? But, um, like for me, like it was simple and, and I'm, and I'm the person will ask like 80 million questions. Like that's exactly what I did when I got there. Like, like Dan said, I literally walked in, you know, as you guys know, the unit is still in pre-order. So they only have a certain amount, um, certain units that went out to certain big name producers and stuff that were doing videos on it. So they didn't send me one. So I literally walked in and was like, okay, who do I talk to? Cause you're going to get 90 million questions for me. So I know how to use this. So that was the, so you use the engine prime software on it, which is like nothing to use like at all. Like I didn't even have to ask questions about the software or even on my laptop. 
And like I said, it's a music music management program. So offline, you can do a lot of stuff with it as well. Nice. Yeah. So um, it's a four channel unit and you can do, um, you know, like you can use it as the two channel or you can use it as the four channel. So um, you definitely can, can do it that way. And the big thing that um, I loved about it for mobile DJs is not only are there two mic outputs, but they're dedicated mic channels. So they're not taking away from your DJ channels or anything else that you're plugging in that you're using one of those channels for. And um, they are XLR mic channels. And um, on the unit itself, you can control the EQ levels and the, and the echo effects on both mics. And then on the screen, you also can control more mic options as well. So I love that, like, everybody always complains about mic channels, and I can't do this with it, and I can't do that on my controller. Not only are they dedicated, but they have their own EQs and volumes and everything. So you can deal with that with the mic channels, which was awesome. And I think for some people who we're concerned about the size of the screen when you really put it in perspective that it's basically the size of an iPad, you know, that that's what a lot of, you know, a lot of people are using for just normal everyday work. Yeah. Suddenly it's like, Oh, well, I'm used to that. It's, it's just, I think sometimes when you put it in perspective, like they're just seeing it on this, on the controller, they're seeing in pictures and like, Oh, that looks, that looks small. But when you really, are, I mean, it's a 10 inch, 10 inch, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah 10 inch um, screen. And in the, the clarity and the color and everything. I mean, I know John saw it, like, it's just crystal clear. Yeah. It's like an iPad pro is what it looks yeah. like. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, for those that um, I know, like another thing that people are on the fence about were the jog wheels. Oh, they're not the size of the CDJs. Oh, they're not, they're not this or not that. They're the six inch. I mean, let, let's be honest. I mean, I'm used to CDJs myself and everything, but a six inch jog wheel, I mean, unless you're doing some crazy, crazy, crazy cutting and scratching and stuff that, which you could totally do on this. Cause I, I practiced on that a little bit and doing the cut and scratching. Um, the jog wheels are great. Of course you make them bigger. It's going to make the unit heavier. Um, so the jog wheels and what's really cool about the jog wheels as well is your album artwork will show on jo the jog wheels, but you can also, which I thought was awesome, customize the jog wheels and you could put like your logo on it. And I'm not talking about going to like uh, 12 inch skins and stuff like that. I'm talking about like put like have your logo, however you have it. And just like the artwork jumps on there. You could have your logo just on that. Or like you could customize it if you want to put the client's name or bride and groom's name or, you know, like whatever. So like that's like a cool picture or something like that. So you definitely can show your logo or whatever you want to do on the jog wheels, which was really cool. They definitely should have uh, allowed a, a Shaitan, you know, Shaney logo over there. Well, yeah, I didn't, again, you with that. see, again, this is stuff I didn't know. <laughs> Now I could have the second day if I really wanted to, which I always care. Like I always have my logo. Like I had my laptop with me and stuff of like that because I, I changed up some music and everything for the second day. Cause um, I decided, cause it, which we'll talk about a little bit with Vegas, but there was a booth across from us that every hour on the hour, they did this light show and the music was just talk about like with DJ Expo, how they had somebody walking around about the sound it was just crazy to the point, like it was killing me. So I decided <laughs> the second day that I was going to do a quiet storm mix <laughs> just to chill everybody out in our booth. So I had to like go and like redo it. So I could have just put my logo on the thumb drive and like, but I, I, yeah. See, if that was something I knew ahead of time, I would have been like totally prepared and I would have done that for practice and then have like my logo sitting there and then be like, what? It's my unit. <laughs> Um, another thing that is huge, huge, huge for mobile DJs is the zone out output. Yep. Now this 
to me is like a game changer. So the zone output, um, you could actually entertain basically like two different rooms with two different music, you know, like two different playlists basically going on. So let's just say either they, they didn't tell you about the cocktail in a different room, or they actually did tell you about the cocktail in a different room. And you don't have like a small monitor or a small speaker that you were using and you like have to run there and connect your iPad and be like, oh my God, I'm glad I have a playlist. So the zone output, basically you can be like rock in your main room with, you know, music going on. And then you can do a dedicated XLR output that actually even has gain and EQ controls, and you could run that to your cocktail area and have um, an auto playlist going of like your cocktail standards and have that just play in and just run an auto play while you're oons, 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 oons in this room. And you could hook up your mic for that room too if you wanted to. And you could assign that to either, well, I would assign it to like deck four instead of my master because I'd be using my master for the main room. But then you could put that like on deck four and then run that playlist through deck four while you're using one, two, and three if you're like a more than a two deck type person. So to me, that was a game changer. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think just the fact not that not that they have the zone but just that it was also with like you said it has its own eq and and all these extra features it's just like this wasn't just oh we want to make sure you have an out that nobody else is doing it's like we're gonna make you have an out that nobody else is doing and we want to make it look su or work super cool yeah i mean you could tell that djs gave their input on this unit <laughs> and was like okay this is what I, I, this is what, you know, every time my unit comes out by a company, I like it, but it doesn't have this or if it doesn't have that. And I wish I had this. So you could tell that people were like, okay, this is in the study group, this is what we want. This is what we like to have and everything. So that definitely was like a huge thing. Um, and the way I had it set up, well, I didn't set it up, but the way they had it set down had it set up for me is um, I had two speakers going. So I had a speaker like underneath me, that was my master. And then I had a speaker like on top um, and we kind of put that one on zone so I could show people how I was like, oons, 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 you know, on one channel. And then all of a sudden, you know, I played my um, um, Donnie Marie on <laughs> the playlist on the other channel. Yeah. So like I showed people how like that could be like going on at the same time. And they're like, oh, that's really cool. I'm like, okay, now it's messing with me because they're literally both right here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, they're right here. Okay, I gotta Start change. Matching the zone output. Wait, yeah, I was like, I don't know which way to. I don't know which way to mix. <laughs> I'm so confused. Let me just put the headphones on. <laughs> yeah, so that that was really cool. And then also on the screen, um, there's a record button. So for those that there's two USB slots in the front. So even if you're just DJing like USB thumb drive, you can put another one in there. And this is awesome for people that want to record their own DJ mix, or if you're doing like a wedding and you want to record the speeches or a love story or something like that, hit the record button and, um, you know, just kind of like how you record your mixes and stuff like that. You just hit save and you could save it to the USB and you could put that as part of your package and be like, to give it to the client after the party or something like that. And, you know, be like for an extra $150 and there's, and that, I mean, and you just made 150 because what is it like a thumb drive that you just bought or something, you know? So um, that's a great option to do it, even to give clients, you know, here are all the speeches, here's this, here's that. I could give you the, you know, like people, like I give you the raw footage after the party. You can say, I could give you the recording of all the speeches literally when you walk out the door. Lots of oh, and they have, and it has a, a sound a card slot too. So, I mean, it's got like everything on it. What else? And, uh, for those of you wondering, because I know this was one of the things that came up, was um, I heard talk that there is a case Odyssey is making one or has made one um, that is to be released basically about the same time that Prime Form is going to come out. So it's not like you're, it's not like the Prime Form comes out and like two months later we're going to end case. It's going to be almost hand in hand. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure some other ones will come up with them as well. It's just yeah. that's the first one that I've heard of. 
That is correct. Yeah, but you could still pre-order the Prime 4 now. Um, definitely, you could do it. And some people are doing major pre-order specials as well, too, with the pricing. So you could do that. And then um, when it finally comes out, that's when they're releasing the cases. So it's not like you're going to have to wait like a month with the unit without a case. Nice. Um, I'm trying to think what else, John, did you think of anything? That was pretty much it. We covered, I think, most of the main details. Um, one, the question, I, the final question that we can never answer properly, or I should say positively, is the video. People are like, well, can I do video? Well, no, that's not here. I think you're going to see that in the... Um, Updates. You're going to see that in 2020, uh, probably with the MK2 version. You're not going to see it because this does not have a port for it. It has an Ethernet port, but it does not have a video output and they need to have the ability to put in a you know four terabyte or more hard drive into that plus the usb hard drives and i think you'll see that that time i think it will be here oh yeah i think yeah they, they're already working on two updates right now so um i can't tell you guys what the two updates are but they're already working on two updates that will also be a game changer for the unit that people have been asking about and of course, the next controller they're coming out with in 2019 is a little bit different than this one. So, so we'll we'll yes. get to see that this fall. That'll be that will be a fun a fun little thing for mobile DJs also. Yeah. Um, so I mean, basically, it it's got most of the bells and whistles that people have been talking about. Um, like I said, as far as changing software, it was nothing for me to go to this software to just DJ off of it's, it, you know, like it's, it just wasn't anything crazy to do. I mean, you, you still, you know, like just like virtual DJ and Serato and record box and all of them, you just, you go through your, you know, you go through your playlist, you load a song, you DJ. So it, it still had all that. And like I said, it had my Serato folders and everything in there, or I can make folders up on the fly, which, you know, like, which we do and stuff like that. So and it has the prepare on it. Um, oh yeah, one thing we didn't talk about was it has a search keyboard. So you can hit on the screen to do a search keyboard um, to search for a song or BPM or genre or you know however you do a search when you, you know, artist, however you do it. So you, you definitely can do that too. And you can um, put stuff into a prepare folder. So, you know, just like, like in Serato, you can do a prepare thing up on top. You, you can put them in a folder and then take the songs out of there. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, like, I would say 100, 100 more pros to, like, the one con that somebody would say. Yeah. Just looking through the chat room to see if there's anything. Oh, I haven't looked at the chat room, guys. I'm sorry. No, they, they've been kind of just kind of following along and chatting about it. So. Yeah, um, it doesn't weigh. I uh, do you have the specs on it, John, of how much it weighs? I it wasn't. I, was, I mean, it wasn't it. as heavy as I thought it was going to be. To tell I, you the truth, when I lifted it up, I, I think it's very compatible weight wise to and size wise to the eight thousand. Yeah, it um it is it weighed less than a Pioneer SZ. I can tell you that for a fact and size wise, it's smaller than a Pioneer SZ. So um, the weight was less than 40 pounds. I can tell you that for sure. Maybe like, I don't remember. I mean, I can look it up really quick and tell you like what it was, but it wasn't as heavy as I thought it was going to be. 21.3 pounds. There yeah. Robin. Robin's got it. There you go. Oh, Thanks, Robin. Yeah. So 20, 21 pounds, people like that's nothing with, with the screen, with everything. And also for the screen, you guys, there is a case, a protector that it comes with. So when you go to close it up, um, this, the screen has an adjustable, um, I guess I'll call it like a kickstand. So you can put it at different angles, kind of like your lap, your laptop, you can put those at different angles. So you could definitely put it at different angles. And then, um, when you go to close it up, you just put the cover on it. So when you lays it flat um, and you go to put it in the case, it won't get scratched off. It's already has its own cover on top of it. So you don't have to put like foam on top of foam on top of foam to, to cover it up. Somehow I wondered, Dave was responding that uh, the 200 pounds he referred to was not the controller, but rather the case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Oh, the coffin. Yeah. Yeah. They're not, yeah well, they're not I mean, it's probably going to be the same a weight as the controller. Yeah. 
I mean, that's how it is for like my, you know, my bigger stuff. They're all at least six times the weight of what the, what the controller is. <laughs> right. Yeah. Was there any other questions in the, in the chat that I, I think we've hit most you of guys them. saw? Nothing, nothing that really jumped out. Okay. So definitely, I mean, the, the unit itself, you know, it, it's gotten a lot of buzz, obviously, since it was first really kind of talked about at NAM, and, and, you know, John got his big walkthrough. And by the way, if you haven't seen that, uh, haven't gotten a chance to walk, you know, watch that, it was like 30 minutes and, and they went over like just every little detail that you could think of all the features that were going to be on it and kind of going to, to more in depth of, of what Shady was talking about. So again, if you haven't gotten a chance to check that out, definitely want to make sure you're looking for that video. Uh, it's on, it's on our YouTube page. Uh, John, do you have it linked as well from DJ and TV? Yeah. I think it, I think they can go to either, either site and if they just uh, search prime for, Go to distjockeynews.com and then in the search area, just type in Prime 4. It'll pop up. So definitely definitely want to, you know, if, if you're interested in this or you're like, oh, you know, what Shane's talking about, it sounds like a pretty cool unit. Like if for some reason you've been under a rock for the past month and a half, um, you know, th it would be your opportunity to kind of get that load out and, and just to see. And, and I was one of those people who kind of was in the very beginning skeptical, skeptical. Skept yeah. I, I wasn't sure if I wanted it. Um, so basically it was one of those things. And after watching that video, I know like my interest like went through the roof just because I was, I got a better understanding uh, of just what, what this unit actually was going to be able to do and what it was, what it was for. So um, definitely, you know, definitely something you should be considering and looking at um, if you, if you're in that market and, and wanting to go, wanting to go to route. So. Right. And like I said, don't forget that some manufacturers are offering a pre-order special too. So the price of it is 1600. I don't know what their um, like NLFX. I know they're doing a pre-order special on it as well. So um, definitely, you know, check it out. Um, Anthony mentioned, asked if there's pioneers going to come back, come with something similar. If one company comes out with something, generally the other company is going to come out with a, a similar product with their twists and, and tweaks and such. So I would expect you're going to find a, a large standalone unit like that from Pioneer here. I would I would go as far, and I don't I didn't talk to them officially. I would say by DJ Expo, we're going to see something. Mm -hmm. I would be very surprised if we don't. I'd, I'd be more surprised. Huh? Well, and MJ even talked about this Um you know, when this came out, the, the number of all in one systems that we've suddenly seen, you know, different brands, different companies that are, that are suddenly coming on the market, obviously nothing that I think what caught all, what caught a lot of us with regard to the prime four was just all the little things that went into it. It wasn't just a standalone, but the fact that there is a ton of the standalone systems that are out and, and coming out that, that definitely seems like it might be our new, turning point or a new look to the yeah. new evolution of the controller for lack of better terms um just because of, because of having that and because of so many of these groups are doing it so exactly as john said if one doesn't have it um they're going to soon just because they need to offer it since everybody else is doing it yeah no i mean i'm, I'm yeah i mean I, this was a game changer i definitely have to say that um this was a game changer. So now the, the other companies will have to step up and see what they can do that would be similar or surpass it. But this is, is a beast for an all in one unit. You know, like I said, it's got, it's got everything on it. You don't need to connect the, the laptop because you have the, the touch screen there that does everything that the, the laptop does for mixing and DJing. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure eventually, you know, kind of like with the Pioneer Nexus system, you'll probably be able to do like HID mode and connect it, but they're going to be do tons of updates. They've yeah. already have like a list of all the different updates they're going to be doing. And because it's in the system, like, you know, you're, you're good. You don't have to be like, oh, I have to do this on my computer. Then I have to do this on the, you know, on my unit. Then I have to connect it. Then I have to hold the three buttons down at the same time. And I have to do all this. So it's like, you don't have to do all that stuff that I hate doing those updates. I mean, I know I have to do them and I'm always like, I'm going to do it wrong again, even though I've done this 17 times. So since this has a built in computer, mm -hmm. um, internet capabilities, obviously not worth 
surfing the web on it. But I mean, is it is it for those updates? Is it something that goes to a flash drive and then you put it into this unit, or can we hop on and get it right that way? Let's just say that probably one of the first updates. I'm going to say yes to everything you just said. Okay. So so they already realized that's something that we need to. Oh yes, that was that was the uh, from Nam the question about. Yeah. logging in was huge with that yeah yeah that's one of the very first updates yeah all right so anything else we're gonna throw out there um as far as the prime four no but for those that have been living under a rock today for dj and tv um, I don't know if you guys have known this, but um, before this incredible show that we just did, there have been, um, I'll just call them like little mini convention series shows that have been giving you golden nuggets, including John's show right before mine, which when I watched it, I don't think John took one breath at all during his microphone show. I think he just wanted to get his nuggets out and be like, thank you and good night. And did his like, you know, not mic drop type thing on the mic show. So um, John's just going to tell you guys, if you've been living under a rock, what is happening the next two days. So we've got two more nights. We're going to be doing little mini seminars, and these are going to be starting at 8 o'clock Eastern, and we're going to, going to about 10 o'clock Eastern. You can go out to djntv.com slash djedu, and you'll be able to find the links to all the shows. That included the shows that went up tonight. And if you watch those quickly, you'll be able to see them in full. And in just a little bit, they're going to be uh, they're going to be cut down to smaller tidbits because the full shows are going to be saved over on in the DJ and TV Insider area. So you can see them for a little bit longer, and then they will be uh, just just a little snippet, so folks can get an idea of what they were, and then the bulk of it will be there. But tomorrow night we've got four more uh, presentations. I wonder if I have the list with me here that I can go through. Of course, I could go to that website, but I think I have everything. She's pointing. I'm on it. You are okay. So what? Do we, I, okay, what? Yeah, I don't. I don't. Don't have it here. What do we have tomorrow night, Shani? Please. Oh my God, I can't <laughs> believe you put me on the spot. I can't believe he just literally put me on the spot. Okay, so tomorrow <laughs> night. Tomorrow night. Um, why do I only have the Monday one? <laughs> I only have the Monday one. Hold well, I'm on. I'm, you're to, well, you're I'm on tomorrow and. Um, and I can't tell you who's on it, but I could tell you in like. Well, let's see. Two okay, so seconds. I know Shaney's on tomorrow. Bill, Herman, I'm on tomorrow. Bill Herman's on tomorrow night. Um, Hold on, I'm getting the full list right now. Uh, okay, this is today's um, Tuesday. Here we go. Um, is this no? This is today's again. <laughs> it should be down. You should be able to scroll down. And uh, can I scroll down on this? Okay, hold on. I know you put it all up here. Okay, hold on. Is this uh, today's show? No, it's today's show. Why am I not finding it? I don't like to be put on the spot like this. I'm sorry. Okay, um, so, okay, I've, I, I pulled it up here. So, uh, kick okay, Arnold is going to kick us off here. Um, he's going to kick off the first spot then. He's going to talk about some marketing mistakes that people do. Jeremy Lanby, uh, who does a lot of our videos and such, does a lot of high school dances. He's very quietly one of the biggest high school dance DJs in, in the upper Midwest. And he's going to talk about uh, working with uh, smaller schools and communicating with some of these schools. And he'll talk about some of the small schools he does. Uh, Bill Herman comes on at 8 o'clock and talking about... Uh, a, a path to success for the DJ industry because we've been talking a lot about that kind of more in a private. He's going to, he and I are going to talk about that in, in public. And then uh, Shani is going to, uh, she's going to come in and, and we're going to talk about, uh, about developing your hustle uh, in your, in your DJ business. It's going to be real talk, real, real talk. talk right there. Real talk. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, Brian, uh, Brian Red and I'll kind of wrap up the night tomorrow night. And then let's see Wednesday. Yes. I got that down there too. Uh, Mitch Taylor is going to be starting us off. Um, you're going to be talking about some of the things he did talk about in Vegas with his presentation. And then uh, I've had a lot of people asking about, about knowing about when it's time to leave your day job. They're like, I want to become a full-time DJ. And we're going to dig into that uh, on Wednesday. In the second uh, session, I'll, I'll dig into that one. Uh, Ron Ruth is, uh, did a, a, uh, his spot. He's going to be talking about cl getting clean audio from your weddings. So you can use them for voiceovers and things. And he's going to go through and, and walk a person through that. Uh, Dean Carlson is going to be uh, talking about um, um, 
the little messages and things that we send with our businesses and how to basically keep that kind of a, a branding thing or keeping a, a positive and, and cohesive message for your business, uh, keeping that all together. And then um, Alan Marshall and Bill Herman sat down at Mobile Beats, and we're going to have to do a Mobile Beats show some other, talk about that. We still haven't done that yet. Um, no, I know. But they sat down, and Alan Marshall is a DJ from the UK, uh, just actually won an award at, uh, at the UK uh, DJ conference that just was going on. Um, had some really big things happen in his life and bill and he uh, sat down and talked about it and it actually was became this little 10 minute show that i that ended up going out to like 25 minutes because there was just a lot of neat things that the two of them uh, conversed about so it's not a heavily educational thing to a point but you're going to find out how alan marshall changed his life and changed his life in such a way that he is a much happier healthier and a better performer today than he was so he's going to talk about that and then uh, MJ is going to wrap up the night on Wednesday night. He's going to be doing a uh, music and mixing show uh, Wednesday night. So that, that will be it. So uh, two more nights of, of some great stuff, and that's all going to be available. The links are at djntv.com slash djedu. Very nice. Awesome. So on that note, make sure you're tuning in. Make sure you're getting all the all the details. And uh, if for some reason you've got plans the next couple of nights that uh, you just can't change to be able to tune in, uh, then the great news is you will be able to check these out if you are an insider. And if you're not, this might be the little kick in the butt that you finally need. So go get it taken care of. Just checking news for slash insider. Did I do that right? Yeah, that, that should get us there too. But yeah, DJ and t- djntv.com slash insider. You go click there and you'll find links to get you get you over to the spots. All right. Yeah. So on that note, I think it's a, uh, we're going to probably call it a night. I think it's so. It's been a great one though. We've had, uh, we've had four topics and we had the prime four. So we had a, a lot of details about that. Again, a lot of you've been asking and wanting to know more details and Shaney said she got to play 11 hours. I'm curious, any repeats yeah. from day one to day two, you said uh, nothing within, you know, said nothing within the day, but. I bet you did. Yeah, I did. I did. And that was just because I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Yeah, the repeats on day two was just because I just felt like it. She wanted to hear the baby I, shark. Um, I started playing off of the the darn light show people with their um, <laughs> rock set. So in my head, I already knew all their songs. <laughs> so I played all their songs right, and I knew the timings. So I played all their songs like <laughs> right before they did it, and then I turn. I'm not gonna lie, I redlined um, the unit just so everybody could hear it and then hear it. yeah i was that i was that person he by was, day two with them that. yeah they definitely did not have like like in atlantic city somebody walking around no they did not that was like was yeah sad. and he, they were right across from us too like it was just yeah so i yeah so i did um and then and then like i said the second the second day i did like my quiet storm mix and then i did um my EDM um, crazy mix, which included the Baby Shark, um, Lion King, um, like I did, like all like my Disney EDM songs and everything, just to, like. And then it was so funny because um, the promo only guys were like, "We knew that was Shaney, <laughs> like we knew that was Shaney doing that," because they were like, "They're like, but thanks for keeping us entertained day two because we were losing our mind." I was like, "Yeah, I know these are long hours," so so I started doing that towards the end of day two. That's funny. Nice. (laughs) So anyway, on that note, great show tonight. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for everybody uh, out in uh, YouTube land for for taking some time to join us this evening. Um, You obviously have yourself a great rest of your night. We'll see you all back here. And next Monday, back to five. Good night, everybody.